So by now you should know that the ARP2600 is a semi-modular synthesizer. What that means is without having to create any patch connections, you can still get some sound. Unlike a fully modular synthesizer, where you have to patch in to create even the most basic sound, here you don't have to do that, as there is already a pre-routed internal connection. Alright, so let's take a look at what that internal connection is. I'm going to reload that template from earlier. So I click over here. Under the template category, I'll double click on this one oscillator square template. So as you can see now, the patch points are connected. But if I play, we hear that square wave oscillator. So let's talk about this semi-normal connection. We know that there are three oscillators and all the three oscillators are going into the filter section. Now the labeling on the synth does help to a certain extent to understand how this internal connection works. So you'll notice a bunch of arrows in orange over here. All these arrows refer to the internal connection. So for example, on this VCO1 section, there is a keyboard CV that's going in to control the VCO. So right now VCO1 is what we are hearing. So if I bring this keyboard CV all the way down, and if I play different notes on the keyboard, you'll see that the pitch doesn't change because we've disabled the keyboard tracking for VCO1. If I bring that all the way up, and now if I play notes on the keyboard, the oscillator is tracked. So that's the internal connection here. This keyboard CV is going in and controlling the VCO's pitch. So just like that, we have a bunch of other options. So it works the same way for VCO2 as well as VCO3. Now let's talk about the VCF, the main filter. So on the left over here, these arrows designate the actual audio that's going into the filter. And these arrows here designate the control signal that is controlling the filter's cutoff frequency, or what they call as init filter frequency on the ARP2600. So let's figure out what these are. So you can see here the ring modulation signal is going in on this input. It's all the way down right now though. This signal is up, which is VCO1. So we are hearing VCO1. If I bring this down, you notice that now we've lost the signal. We can bring in VCO2 instead. It also happens to be using the square wave. How about VCO3? That's a sawtooth wave. And again, these are labeled at the bottom here. All right, so those are all the signals that are going into the filter. Let's bring back VCO1 up. Next comes the VCA. What is going into the VCA? Again, on the left over here are the audio inputs, just like the VCF, these are all the audio inputs. These are the control inputs. Here on the VCA, these two are the audio inputs, and these two are the control inputs. So the two audio inputs are the output from the VCF, or the ring modulator. Again, the ring modulator is down right now, but the VCF is up. If I was to bring this down, we again lose the signal. And then finally, the VCA goes into this mixer section. If I want to add some of that spring reverb signal into this square-shaped oscillator sound that we're hearing, I just have to bring up this reverb level. And yes, it is a stereo reverb. So you have independent control for the left reverb amount and the right reverb amount. So that's basically the internal normal connection. So you will notice that the sequencer was not involved. So if you want to use the sequencer, you will have to manually patch it in. All right, in the next tutorial, let's dive deep into individual modules. First, let's take a look at oscillator one.